All right, guys. It is a gorgeous morning here, and I think it's time for another garden tour. It's been a little while, about a week and a half. So let's just dive into what's going on in the garden. All right. We have radishes. We've been picking them and eating them. So these little globe ones, I just throw in salads and stuff or eat them raw. Sometimes I just snack on radishes. And then there are ones over here that are slightly different. Um, these guys, they are a much longer radish. And these guys, I like to roast. So you can use them just like any other roasted root vegetable, like a carrot, a beet, a turnip, and they're really mild and delicious. Just around the corner here, it's a great big chamomile plant. So it's getting some buds on it, and so that should be blooming. And with chamomile, as soon as it starts blooming, you want to start picking it, and that'll encourage it to keep blooming. And then along the sides here, <clears throat> I have some Brussels sprouts, some borage, which you can eat. The leaves are a bit, um, a bit fuzzy, spiky almost, so I don't really eat them, but they're great just for attracting pollinators. <clears throat> and then down here, I did throw in some dinosaur kale. So that is this kind of little row beside the garden shed and the radishes. I do you have some rosemary in one of these pots? and some lemongrass. All right, let's look at this stuff, guys. So these along the back are climbing beans. They are called sunset runner beans. Um, they're supposed to have a nice peachy colored flower on them. And then down below that, I have placed four eggplants. And then in there is the asparagus. No signs of asparagus popping through yet. But hopefully in the next week or two, um, we'll see something coming up. Tarragon, arugula, and okay, this bed now along the fence post here. I've planted out tomatoes and runner beans. So the tomatoes on this side are determinate, so they don't get that tall but the tomatoes on this side are indeterminate, which means they will continue to need to be trellised all the way up. They probably, well, they might reach six, seven feet, but I doubt it. In between, I have some sunflowers and some runner beans. So these are a scarlet runner bean. Um, they will get a nice bright red flower on them. I've got a little bunch of oregano, some chives, <clears throat> spinach, which I'm going to pull out and process. Um, actually, I'm going to cut a bunch of it today for dinner. So it's just going to make a pasta with some spinach and asparagus and a mushroom gravy. Um, and then I do have the little baby ones in there. So we'll get these big guys out, give the little baby ones room to grow and germinate. Um, still got the mizuna along the back, the little spiky leaf. And then... This is bok choy and beautiful purple bok choy. So that is what is growing in that bed, the one that's beside my watering can. Oh, and in case you didn't catch it, that right here is um, horseradish. And horseradish is a bit like mint. You don't want to plant it in your garden because it will take over. So right in front of us, I have some trellises, but I don't have anything planted in there yet. Uh, I will be putting in most likely uh, some squash um, to grow up. Last year I did that in this corner. So I had squash and then I had squash um, and it was just this beautiful big jungly wall of green leaves. Um, so I'm trying to go for something similar by using the broad beans down there to get some height um, and the tomatoes shouldn't really put squash in the same bed year after year so I'm debating I might do cucumbers 
I have put in some melon. So this is a hammy melon. There's two of them and we'll just see which one survives or looks like it's doing the strongest and we'll keep that one. Beside it we have more runner beans. Um, more runner beans in the back. This cilantro is all gonna come out soon too. I've got a nice recipe for like a cilantro dip. You just like blend it up with some garlic and white wine vinegar um, and yeah, a little bit of salt and pepper. <clears throat> and so it sounds delicious, I'm gonna try it. And it's just like a dip that apparently you can pour on rice, quesadillas, tacos, anything. I have planted some cucumber seeds in here, but nothing has germinated yet. It's only been a day or two, so. We're gonna have to be patient on that one. This chicory plant, I'm gonna chop it right off at the base. So I'll leave the roots in the ground, but I'm just gonna chop it off. That will give me room to plant, I wanna put some um, bush beans in here. And it will also most likely mean that the chicory will re-germinate, that I will get a brand new bushy plant from it. I do have one transplanted cucumber and another black coat runner bean. And then I've got some Brussels sprouts in this bed. Nothing in the bee hotel yet, but I keep checking it. It's probably only a matter of time. Um, this isn't gonna be a good angle. We have an artichoke in the very corner. We've got the peas along the side here. And they have started to find the trellis and climb their way up. And then down at the end, we have a couple more artichoke. I did, it's not real pretty. The soil down there is super rocky um, and there actually isn't much soil. And I have a raspberry that I wanted to grow along this fence line. So I kind of improvised and just slapped some rocks down there and filled it with soil. Um, and that is a raspberry bush that will, in theory, grow up this fence. And then my potatoes in a pot. And then beside that is the raised bed with the cauliflower. The tatsoi, which is starting to really fill in now. Getting some nice spoon-sized leaves on there. Really high in vitamin C, really high in vitamin I. Tatsoi is very good for you. And it's tasty. We've got some broccoli. The oregano has bushed out. There is another broccoli in the back corner. The carrots are filling in nicely. Another broccoli in the corner over there. And then the onion bed. So I'm a bit worried because I've never grown onions from seed like this. And while I did purchase what's called long day onions because we have, like we're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's basically based on your latitude. I'm concerned that like they're not that big and that I will get lots of puny little onions off of them. But because I've never done this before, I have nothing to compare it to, so I don't know. We'll just cross our fingers and keep watching them grow. I did plant some carrot seed in here um, and then this arugula is going to come out. Um, I've been snacking on it, um, but it's, like as you can see, gone to seed. And the pollinators have enough stuff out now to eat, so I don't need to be catering to pollinators anymore. Okay, look at this garlic. It's super tall. And the stems are super meaty and thick on it, so that's really cool. Got some green onion in here, some Swiss chard. I did throw in two tomatoes. I don't know if anybody else does this, but you've got like too many tomatoes and then nowhere to put them. I've got two tomatoes in this bed and I've also got some zucchini in here. So they've just been transplanted. If your transplants get like this, like if you lose a leaf or something, it's not a big deal because um, we've got some fresh growth in the middle that seems to be doing totally fine. That could have just been a bit of sunburn. We didn't have frost. Could even have been a bit of like root damage. Now this is a new zucchini that I'm growing this year, new to me. It's a round zucchini, so they say you can stuff them. Um, so it'll be like a green, globy, 
round zucchini. So we'll keep you posted on that, which is kind of cool. Got your very traditional zucchini, green baseball batty zucchini. And then down here I've got another one of these green circle ones. I guess they're like little baby melons almost. At least that's what it looks like in the seed packet. Okay, so beside us is the potato and garlic bed. So potatoes, as you can see, have come up, which is lovely. So I'm gonna let them get hmm, probably a foot taller before I start hilling them up again. I haven't totally decided what I'm gonna use to hill them up. I don't wanna use hay or straw because it could introduce seeds and weeds to the garden. Don't want to use more soil because I don't want to have like mountains of soil here. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to hill them up with yet, but I guess you'll find out when I make the decision. Uh, down at the very end there, that's chicory. So what I was talking about doing to the one that's behind me, I want to, last year what I did with that one was just cut it off at the base and the roots were still in the soil and this spring it germinated and has been producing early chicory. Okay, let's go down this row. This row had beets in it, which I pulled out yesterday and I have now put in peppers. So I have, this is an orange bell. I've got four of them, or three of them. No, four of them. And then I've got a red bell down at the end here. And then the rest of the peppers are over there, that bed. And I'll take you over there in a minute. So, yeah, we've got the peppers in here. What I did with the peppers is called topping. I want to see if I can find see it in here. See those little sprouts? You cut off the top and it encourages side growth, new side growth. And you do that to get a bushier pepper plant. The rest of this aisle um, are some brassicas. So there's a cabbage. I believe that one's a cauliflower. There's a couple of cool rabi, just because I wanted to try it and kind of get an idea of like how it grows and I wasn't gonna grow like a crop of it until I know that I like it and how it works and how it grows. And then I've got a cauliflower. Okay. This middle row here is kind of cool. In my mind, it's gonna look really good because the bottom is broad beans, so those are gonna get bushy. And then just on the weekend, I planted out my spaghetti squash. So the spaghetti squash will climb up these panel, panel fences. So we're gonna have squash along the top and beans down below, which are gonna be super bushy. So it's gonna be full of green and should look really lovely. That is what I'm thinking, anyways. That's what I'm hoping it's gonna do. Okay, and then I guess the only thing I really need to show you, oh, we've got more plants out in the sun. There's those tomatoes that I don't have a home for. I always do this. I thought I was being so careful this year, and now I still planted too many. All right, so. Lavender. Now this bed did have beets in it and it still does have beets in it, but it was taking up a lot of real estate for something that I can grow in the fall. And I can't grow peppers in the fall. I need to get my peppers in now. So I made the decision to just slap these peppers in, um, in this row. And then if the beets continue to grow and I get some beets out of it, great. If I don't, no big deal, I'll plant them again later in the season and I will get a fall crop of beets. So, these guys, again, they've been topped to encourage growth. Oh, I'll get out of the light. So, here we go. We are seeing some little seed head, flower heads in there. There's actually a flower on this one. I'll go around it. Uh, the white bit is the little flower that will hopefully be pollinated and produce peppers. All right, and then my greens in here, the kale, the mizunas, 
Chinese cabbage, purple bok choy, more spinach that's going to be coming out today. It is starting to go to seed in there. That little head is going to be a seed head. So we want to just kind of get this out and get it processed, even if I just get it into the freezer for later on in the season. Okay guys, I'm just going to take you over to what is kind of like our dry garden. It's just on the other side of this fence. And this is where I am growing all kinds of hot loving stuff. So I've got tomatoes and peppers down below. Let me flip you around and I'll take you through each pot and what's in what. Okay guys, so this little area here is like a little microclimate in our yard. Um, because of the brick wall, it retains heat um, and releases it out at night. Again, cement driveway will do the same thing. The rocks, the black pots, like they're all heat traps. So in this particular area, I plant peppers and basil and tomatoes and things that love the heat. Um, and I'm also able to control the water um, better because these tomatoes are in pots. Last year I grew tomatoes in the ground in my um, raised, or not raised beds, like right in the ground. And the soil here is really sandy. So I found that I couldn't keep up with the watering enough and my plants suffered from it. So the plan is this year to plant them in these pots along the driveway, which I know I can keep the moisture in. It's got good soil in them. Um, and hopefully we'll get a better tomato yield. So let's just walk over here and take a look at this stuff. I've got my peppers in here. And then I've got, what was this one? This was a Cherokee purple. We've got jalapenos. Those are all jalapenos across the back. And then these ones are like a little Peruvian pepper that um, you can bring in in the winter time. It's just like a small pepper plant that becomes a little house plant. More tomatoes. I've got basil purple basil. These peppers are called Jimmy Nardello. So they're a slightly spicy pepper. It's an Italian variety. So I've got three of those. And they love it over here. Last year I grew my peppers this way in pots along this wall and they flourished. I don't know if it's just because it's extra hot. We had a really hot summer last summer, really hot and dry, but these guys did really well in pots over here. This is lettuce leaf basil. See how it gets that like curly leaf on it? It's really delicious and they will get really big. Excuse me. I've got my shishito peppers. And we've got more basil and more tomatoes. And then I've got my herb post. So down here, this is, um, what is it? Lemongrass. So that can go in curries and stews. And I have put in some nasturtium seeds on the sides because you can eat nasturtium. Um, the leaves are peppery like an arugula, but also very high in vitamin C. Oh, the squirrel's been digging in this pot, jerk. That's what the snakes are for. Let's put a snake in the pot and hopefully that will discourage him from digging in there anymore. I've got some Italian flat leaf parsley and up top here I've got basil. So yeah, that is the herb post and our little microclimatey, beautiful European style hot bed. It's always nice to see some birds in the bird feeder too. That's uh, that's the garden. It's going to really take off in the next two weeks. Um, it's going to be hot. Not too hot, but like warm to encourage growth. And as long as I keep things watered, I think you're going to see a huge difference between this garden tour and next Saturday's garden tour.